Studying is hard work, especially when it comes to independent textbook study. We want to help you get the most out of your textbooks without investing enormous amounts of time. More importantly, remember it well. In this lesson, we will cover the following skills. Reviewing your reading, setting the mood, and the three R's to remembering. First of all, let's change the way we look at textbook reading. Academic material is not meant to be read. It is meant to be ransacked and pillaged for essential content. Canberra University Academic Skills Center. It's like this. If you had a limited amount of time to access the capital displayed in this picture, how would you do it? Would you start with the coins? There are a lot of them. What if you could take only one item at a time? If you were just as economically minded as most people, you would probably go for the big gold bricks in the back first thing. And why is that? Because they have the most value. Textbook study is no different. As students, you are always dealing with a limited amount of study time, and you don't want to waste your time dealing with a bunch of worthless information. The truth is, you can waste a lot of time and effort just reading the text instead of studying it. There is a method of study that can help. It is called the SQ3R method and was developed by Francis Robinson at The Ohio State University. This is the grandfather reading approach that is used in most reading approaches today. It stands for survey, question, read, recite, and review. The first thing to do when you begin studying your textbook is to take a quick survey. Look over the chapter's headings and subheadings, tables, pictures, and graphs. Look to see if there's a chapter outline and spend time reviewing this to identify with key concepts, main ideas, and supporting ideas that will be discussed in the chapter. Identify any bolded terms. Most importantly, review the summary at the end of the chapter. Isn't it awesome that most books already have a summary at the end? It's like they're trying to help you out in condensing all important information. Just remember, doing a brief survey allows you to get a better overview of the things that you need to learn. It helps you to isolate key points and also be in critical deeper thinking about the subject material. Next. Let's take a look at the importance of asking questions. Thomas Berger has stated, The art and science of asking questions is the source of all knowledge. There's no doubt that questions are a fundamental part of the learning process. They will be your motivator and personal guide as you study your textbook. Often, textbooks provide the reader with questions that can be utilized while reading to identify the main points in the chapter. If the text does provide questions, treat these as potential test questions and nail down their answers. If the book doesn't provide test questions, you may need to formulate the answers yourself. One way to do this is take the probing words, who, what, when, where, and why, and how, and turn each section heading of your textbook into a question using these words. For instance, let's pretend that the section heading in your textbook is titled Types of Plant Tissues. You might then ask questions such as, what are plant tissues? How many are there? What makes them different from each other? As you then read through the section, you should be looking for the answers to these questions. By acting as an investigator, searching for the answers to your questions, you make reading an active process where you're looking for something rather than hoping the important information will just jump out at you. So what do you do if, when reading the chapter, you don't find the answers to your question? One important thing to remember is that each statement in the textbook is an answer to a question. You may find that as you do the reading you simply ask the wrong questions, or that you found the answer to a different question. Well that's great! Write that question down and underline the corresponding answer in your textbook. By asking questions and searching for answers in your readings, you'll not only discover the answer to many of your questions, but also other questions that the reading answers. These will aid you in identifying the main points in the reading and excellent review questions for the test. You can use these same probing words not with section headings, but with bold-faced terms, summary statements, and other things. Just remember, these words are your friends to help guide you to your answers. Now that you have the questions, how do you find the answers? Just read it. But remember, textbook reading should not be confused with leisure reading. Textbook reading requires focus, commitment, and discipline. You'll get the most out of your reading by searching for the answers to your questions. But to do it in less time, consider these tips. Find an area to study. One where you won't be disturbed, but also one where you won't be tempted to fall asleep. This means studying on your sofa or in the park are not ideal places. Put away your cell phone and other social distractions. Have all you need for your study at hand. Textbooks, notebooks, pens, highlighters, and a water bottle. And give yourself a time frame. For example, I need to have these 10 questions answered in 30 minutes. Offer yourself a reward upon completion. If I can get through these two reading blocks, I'll go for an ice cream with some friends. This is a great way to motivate yourself, but you must be disciplined. Read in blocks. Don't just read words or sentences. Read the section and read to understand the whole, not just a few words. And most importantly, read for comprehension, not for completion. Before moving on from one section of reading to the next, take a minute to make sure you found the main ideas from that section. How do you do this? Read or summarize in your own words what you have just read in the section and do it out loud. If you can't put it in your own words, 
it's a sure sign that you need to go back and reread the text. Upon reciting and summarizing, go back and underline or highlight what the important points were. By waiting to highlight, it will prevent you from overmarking your text. Take notes in your own words of what the main points were in the section you just read. Why is that important? The more senses you use, the more likely you are to remember what you just read. This is triple strength learning, seeing, saying, and writing. You might even diagram an outline of what the chapter is all about. This will also provide you with a visual model of the chapter. It's been said that 80% of one's time with a textbook should be spent reciting key concepts, main ideas, and supporting ideas found in the text, with the actual reading comprising of only 20% of your time. Remember this, if you don't remember anything that you read, you are basically wasting your time. Reciting is the key to making your readings memorable, so you might need to spend a little more time reciting your textbook readings. Finally, take time to review what you have learned. The brilliant Edmund Burke once said, Reading without reflecting is like eating without digesting. Reviewing of textbook reading can be brief, but it needs to happen regularly throughout the semester. I would recommend reviewing immediately following the completion of your readings, once again the next day, and a third time by the end of the week, and then weekly throughout the semester. Diligent review helps learn the material better, cuts down on study time, and reduces stress of test day cramming. I hope the things you have learned in this lesson have been helpful and that you will use these tips to improve the quality of your textbook reading.